Welcome to the In Game Boss Podcast. I am your host, Player One, Jeremy, aka your retro activist, aka your In Game Boss, aka your live streamer for the In Game Boss program. And with me, the second person in the chair, into in the center of our live session on Twitch, Jerron. Center Square, yes. Circle AKA gets the square. Aka Vaku, aka the Grumpy Bear eighty four. Um, AKA, I mean, I already did the Hollywood square center square joke. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting off. I'm fighting off the crud. 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 Yes, AKA fighting, <laughs> off the, fighting off the crud. But we got a special guest. Mm. He's always been here. He's been a fan, but he's always been here for our, for our, you know, our year sessions, right? He's been here for 93 episode. He's been there for our 96. That was a hot one. And he always comes with a mixed bag of surprises for the show and whatnot. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. Mr. DC, how you doing, man? Oh, it's me? It's not Pod? Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you. Oh my <laughs> goodness. It is awesome to be here and I love it. Thank you so much. No, thank you, man. You, 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 you. I've been a big fan of you ever since you've been on the show. You know, I've been following you on your Twitch, which I can't wait for you to do some shoutouts for that. Ever since Jerome mm-hmm. recommended you, we we're like, let's do this. Like, the triple threat is back together, it's like a band coming back together for another year, another special episode, and whatnot. I mean, decently separated, unfortunate. Well, in, undecent. You know what? Never mind. You know, what? <laughs> I'm always <Pre-COVID>. in COVID. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. The last time you uh, you were on, you were actually at my place, and man, you were security up. You had the mask on. He mm-hmm. was he was like, "We're I, doing this." <laughs> I, I had my little face shield, and then the mm-hmm. mask, and everything. Yeah, I know. I know. Man. I did it. I did it up. Man, he was looking like you know, look a soldier from Star Wars. You know what I mean? <laughs> but he was ready, and no so. Risks. But, but poor Jerron, you know, he had to uh, stay at home for that. But no big deal. No big deal. So I'm, 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 I'm doing for your protection, man. You know, I'm, I'm damn near patient zero half the time. <laughs> but once again, DC is back. We're going to be talking about another year of gaming. And how it works is we <laughs> pick a year. We pick a random year. We don't even think about it. We just said a year. It's like, all right, that's what we're doing. And this actually has been in the, um, in the waiting list for quite a while you know, but then the pandemic came, like you said, DC, and you know, like stuff, stuff just got pushed back. But we're we finally doing it. We finally getting here to do it, and I can't wait to talk about it. We're gonna be talking about the year two thousand and two. It's gonna yes. be awesome. And you know, it's funny because I, I every time I say year, I'm like, I don't think there was anything good in that year. And it's like, no, no, there's always something great in there. You, you'd be surprised what made it in two thousand two and in any other year compared to like ninety six. Ninety six crazy, you know, like the dawn of the N sixty four and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, blew it was, my freaking mind. Yeah, a of, right. A lot of game engines and technology kind of coming to fruition. Mm-hmm. But before we even start, our special guest DC, I want everybody to know where can they find you, what they love about you, what games are you playing right now? Because you're the retro star, and that's why I came to watch some retro gaming. I, I, I want to say retro star. There's some oh. real classic gamers out there. I, I am doing a little bit of a detour on that whole okay. uh, retro train. Okay. Because right now, <laughs> I'm gaming a, a PS2 game that, thanks to Genki Shadowcast, oh. is working perfectly on my laptop. So I just have my original PS2 connected, and it just streams like HD quality. It is oh, wow. uh, freaking amazing. But you can find me at twitch.tv slash DC Bueller. And currently I'm doing part two of the Dragon Guard series, okay. which if you haven't heard of it, that's okay. Have you heard of Nier? Because Nier <laughs> is a sequel to Dragon Guard 1. So <laughs> you, might, you might know what I'm talking about now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so right now I'm just spending uh, my uh, Friday, Saturday, Sundays doing uh, different games. I mean, right now I'm doing this one, but uh, actually tonight, after we're done with this, if you want to keep the party going, come on to my stream. I'm going to be doing some old school Genesis games that mm-hmm. I just got working. So okay. Uh, okay. Right on. that's going to be a surprise. Okay. Okay. So far on All your right. streams, your previous streams, which one did you feel like you got a lot of love on? Oh gosh. Uh, I think it's. I feel like Goldbox because I got to name some of the 
viewers after characters. So, or some of the characters after viewers rather. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was a four game series. And that just kind of was me kind of launching off and starting my original Twitch thing really. Because I used to be doing stuff on Common Space and then I switched over to this and I've been just loving it because I get to shout out my pod emotes everywhere. And pod's been a huge part of the stream. Uh, whenever someone uh, you know tips some bits and stuff like that, he gets an extra treat. So he's he's loving it too. Okay. Oh, so you're affiliated already. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, by the way. Belated congratulations. Yeah, congratulations indeed. My Thanks. favorite stream I watched him was actually the first Drake and Guard that he um, didn't. Well, he mentioned you the second one, but he, the previous one, of course, he's going by the order of it. Um, mm. I like it because the fact that like there was a part where you played, you were playing one of one of the uh, alternate endings or one of the scenarios, I guess is a better, better way or different paths mm. or whatever. And it was where... And no one's really gonna know what I'm talking about if you haven't played the game. So, but there was a part that you were uh, um, you were on a dragon and you were facing off something in the future that happened in the what it would happen in our presence where you had to play a rhythm game based on a strip of colors coming at you and you had to reflect them back with the same color in this pattern and it was crazy, crazy yeah. seeing that. It's like, like it's only a two minute level, but it's. It is absolutely insane, and they did it again in Dragon Guard Three for mm. uh, one of the endings, and it's just except in that one that's seven minutes long, and even after the screen fades to black, you're still supposed to keep up with the rhythm. What? Like, oh that's yeah, not, that's not nice. <laughs> that's not nice oh, at all. That sounds oh. unnecessary. That sounds like trolling and desk flipping, and uh, yeah, I am not looking forward to getting that again. Mm. But I guess you know you want to prove the point that you did this and whatnot. But even though you did show people your save file, like I have done this before. Look at this, and it's like, yeah. At the yeah, same time, I said, like, man, you have nothing to prove. <laughs> it's ninety nine point ninety nine hour, like blah, yeah. Mm-mm. Oh goodness. But no, DC is entertaining. He will, he will, he will talk to you. Don't let him. When he's in a serious mode, he'll say, "Give me a second, But he will acknowledge you. I promise. I promise that. So, uh, and Jerron, you also uh, you've been in and out too, which you're twitching, right? Yeah, I've mostly mostly out this week, but um, you know, I've 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 been streaming a little bit of 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 Tekken whenever I can play. But I'm taking a little bit of a break uh, mm. online right now. If you ask anybody who plays that stuff, stuff. If you ask anybody, even you know Coop, who we. Uh, who you interviewed a while, while back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, online Tekken is a joke right now. So I'm taking a break <laughs> from that. Um, I'm playing, if I want to chill out, play cities. Um, I don't think I'll be streaming, like playing uh, M- MMO, because that, that'll just get boring for people. But, you know, I, I may pick up uh, The Ascent. I got that on the Game Pass. May okay. stream that. You know, it's pretty fun. Uh, it's it's just random. It's, it's, it's based, I'm at the point where it's like, whatever I feel like playing. And that's what's up. I'm not going to put it on any particular difficulty because like, like DZ, I, I have nothing to prove. I've beaten <laughs> the hardest of hard games on hard modes. I got nothing to prove to anybody anymore. You know? <laughs> I'm a grown uh, man. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I, may, I, may get, I may get a wild hair and, and, and play Ghost of Tsushima and play that okay. on regular story mode just because. <laughs> so. There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I may play Sekiro again. I may pick Sekiro back up. When you do that, feel free to come by and take my Afro Samurai sword if you want to. You want to cosplay a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, I don't really have time for Twitch, really. Except now, I decided to do it for the show wise. But me personally, I don't really have that much time. I got too many projects going on and network and whatnot. As you know, this is live. We are live as part of the end game process. Uh, in-game boss program that we're gaming other variety shows that's how you know we're live already stuttered anyways <laughs> but of course you know you could always check out all our great programs on the network we got you know our movie podcasts we got our the world gaming trade show that i do with my boy brendan from the game attic podcast we got an rpg podcast called the role base podcast and definitely check out some of our video content on youtube like you know buddy up gaming uh the cabinet session that i do with uh jaron here ace and scrub that i do with my friend Bree. uh yeah the goal is just kind of just give you content you know all one place so you don't have to go look for any anywhere else especially our auto sh- our audio shows right on um, Podbean, mm-hmm. apple whatever you know we got a link down there 
all in one place. I don't need you to search. I want you to stay in one place. I want to keep you company. Keep you warm. <laughs> okay. And That's there'll great. be tons of company. Help me out during this pandemic working at home. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But we home. are here because <laughs> this is not 2000 in uh 21 right now this is now 2002 we're going back to that time to talk about the video games i know right i know i know i need that special <laughs> effects isn't that like a south park like like butter i'm going, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> oh goodness but, but there was a yeah. lot of interesting things that happened in 2002 but i want to talk about a couple of things that did um in 2002 firefly was a thing Remember Firefly? Everybody loved Firefly, right? That was that Fox show. Yeah, it didn't last very long. Yeah, kind of follow up Serenity. Yeah, that came out in 2002. I personally didn't know that. I thought it was like 2003. But I remember I was a junior by then in high school. What, Jerron, you already graduated. You gone, you right? Uh, the fall of 2002, I was, uh, I was, I was gone. Yeah. yeah, I graduated spring of 2002. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm 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 not I'm not that much older. DC, you were in college, was, uh, right? DC, oh, were you in yeah. college? I was an old man college boy <laughs> by, by then, so That's what's so up. You're already what a junior? Uh, yeah, yeah, mm. forever junior. Let's stick with that. <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys also remember uh Naruto came out uh around that time. <laughs> uh now I don't know if it was American when it first came or overall Japanese. I don't know. I'm just going by what I see on on the uh, Google that they said 2002 was Naruto. So mm -hmm. uh, I could tell by your uh, sucking your face in DC, you were not really a big fan of that show. I'm guessing. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think the only like long series show of that nature that I really liked. Okay, well the only two were like Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball, and that's it. I'm, okay, I am old school old boy. Like get your Stuff off my lawn of Cowboy Bebop Evangelion. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, no wrong with that. Yeah. No. no. At, at that time, the only, my first exposure to Naruto was um, some some of the ladies in my Japanese class actually got um, uh, fan, fan subs of them mm -hmm. digitally. <laughs> and we would watch them. This was like 2003, 2003, you know, 2004. We would watch them. Uh, after or before we did our studies or homework or whatever, and you know, also to practice our listening. So that was my first exposure to that show. Okay. But uh, aside from that, my shows in 2002 were uh, it was some Cowboy Bebop. It was some. Um, it was this was before Samurai Champloo, but it was. Uh, I was still stuck on mostly the movies. Mm -hmm. Although my dad and I still still rock that. Uh, still rock that Dragon Ball, and. <laughs> Guilty pleasure. We watch. We watch Sailor Moon. I don't care. Card Captor. I don't care. Watch right. It too. I love yeah. that. Love exactly. That. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Brandy. That Brandy, intro Brandy theme. Oh my card god. Captor. Like it came on early mornings. Um, on one of the sh on one of the stations I watched, and whenever that came on, I was like, I don't want to go to school. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, Saturday mornings before they started doing it every day. Saturday mornings. That was the time. It was like, all right, are we getting a new episode of Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon? <laughs> Yes. All right. Cool. Cool. What's going on with the Cell Saga? They were both on Toonami right. too, right? Or was it just Dragon Ball? They, yeah. They, no. They um they moved Dragon Ball. I don't think Card Captor moved to Toonami. Okay. Or if, if it did. Oh I, wait a minute. Maybe Card Captor was on 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 the WB at the time. I, I remember that was being on the WB for a bit on like. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it was Dragon Ball or and CW -Oh now and Card Captor, all that. Mm hmm. It I think what made Naruto, uh, Naruto popular at the time because no one ever seen like a ninja show, so that was a very popular <laughs> thing. I mean, the last ninja stuff you knew was you know Ninja Turtles. So like, what what yeah. was the next big ninja thing? Uh, I was so, I was a Ninja Scroll kid, but I kind of watched that sooner than I probably should have. A lot of people. Same thing with Akira. Uh, what about hey. movies though? So Scooby Doo movie came out at that time. Yes. You know. Um, whoa, whoa. <laughs> right, Ice Age. Ice Age, the first Ice Age. Uh, oh, yeah. Harry Potter, uh, Chamber of Secrets. That was out. Reign of Fire. <laughs> Everybody remember Reign of Fire, right? That was uh, Was that the Christian Bale one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 The Scorpion King. <laughs> uh, With, uh, yes. The the Rock was, was in the starting stages of his Hollywood blockbuster. <laughs> coming the off movie. The Mummy, too. So, um. Then you have Lord of the Randy Rings. Randy Frazier's also making a comeback now. Say what? 
Brandon Frazier is making a comeback. I, oh, at least sure. so I heard. Oh, well, okay. I've, I've seen a lot of memes and stuff. And I mean, like, okay, that's got to mean something. <laughs> I think okay. the blacklist that he was on is kind of going away. He's getting unblacklisted. So we should see some. Yes. He's so good. Oh, if, if, you're a Nickelode- if you're a Nickelodeon fan, uh, the Wild Thornberries were coming out at that time. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So it was an interesting year. But the number one movie that everybody should remember from 2002 is The Adventures of Pluto Nash. <laughs> With Eddie Murphy. Oh, God. Right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 I, I thought you said Super Troopers. That's no, 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 no. Uh, Pluto Nash. Woo. That was a, that was a sci-fi movie for Eddie Murphy. Woo. Uh, that, that movie that was, was a movie. <laughs> it was a movie. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to cash a check, ladies and gentlemen. You hey, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. But man, he must have been struggling. I mean, he has 10 kids, so I guess he got to do what he got to do. But, you know, it was, <laughs> But man, I guess it's, it can't be worse than Haunted Mansion, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I mean, it, there was some good stuff. Uh, Queen of the Damned. Queen of the Damned was 2000. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. the last uh, last uh, Leah movie. Yeah. That's yeah, it. yeah. I mean, I, I I can't say too much about their recasting. You know, they couldn't get Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise or anything, but Aaliyah was the one to save that movie anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and um, to tie it back into video games, the first Resident Evil movie. What? Yeah. Are oh you my god. Bitch. Okay. Now I saw that in theaters like three or four times because that yes. that like that like the the soundtrack. Oh my god! I had that on repeat. Ah, oh, so good. Yeah, and and of course, Blade Two. I, I did that. not like Blade Two. I did not like Blade 2. It was better than Blade 3. That That (laughs) is truth. That is truth. (laughs) That is an objective fact that you just stated. I saw Blade 2 in the theaters with my brother. Uh, My brother and I almost got into a a fight with some dude who was smoking a a black and mild in the movie theater. He was talking. My brother was like, I'm kicking her. I was like, oh, whoa, 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 because I got to fight with you now. (laughs) (laughs) I don't. Hey, let me get my shoes. Let me get my shoes on. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, oh, God. I didn't bring my roll of quarters. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, there's some, yeah, 2002 was, uh, I don't know. It was, it was a very special year. It was also kind of the, I believe it's the first year, no, second year, I want to say for the newcomers, you know, the Xbox and then Nintendo's new console, you know, yeah. cause they were, they were oh one. So this is their yeah. actual, this will be their, they yeah, it's their first year. Sorry, not their second year, first year come around. So, we kind of got a lot of surprise games as PS2 is still trying to, you know, hold down the fort, still launching those games on there. Um, but once again, there was a lot of surprises coming off of that uh, of that year. And so let's go ahead and talk about the, the list of the games on here. So uh, for the viewers that are watching this, I have a chart up for you. But, you know, some of the games that you see on this list is just crazy. We have Grand Theft Auto Vice City. We have Metroid Prime. We have Gungrave. We have Animal Crossing, Splinter Cell, Morrowind, Resident Evil Remake, Mech Assault, Super Mario Sunshine, Jet Set Radio Future, Sly Cooper, Ratchet and Clank, Divine Divinity, and Kingdom Hearts. And so now these are the few that I personally picked that were the probably the most popular ones. If anybody in the chat box or anybody watching us disagrees with that, please. Please leave a comment down there and tell us, you know, what games also stood out. Because we ch- we try to limit ourselves, right? We couldn't, because la- the past <laughs> shows we went up to like twenty. Like we're we're gonna be here forever, so we gotta pick, we gotta <laughs> slim it down a little bit and talk about like the yeah. best of the best that we think they're the most popular ones. You know, with a little hint of DC on the side, because yeah. every yeah, time yeah, yeah. DC <laughs> drops two new ones, I'll be like, "Hey, man, I need to add two. Why? Because I ain't feeling none of those games. I need these two. <laughs> it's like, all right, fine." Yeah, <laughs> I mean that, this, that's kind of true. <laughs> now, now, for our '96 or 1996, you mentioned you were still more on the PC side of gaming. By 2002, were you kind of shifting back over to console? Or yeah, I definitely was because uh, my uh, laptop was not keeping up with almost anything, and it was just pretty much all you know, either PS2 or um, or. Uh, xbox 
I forget when Halo came out, but yeah, we were doing that in the dorms, you know, like yeah. all night long. <laughs> yeah, that same, same. It, it was have one half of the dorms hooked up with a couple of Xboxes, the other half hooked up. So and, you two you know, both own an Xbox at the time. Is that what oh, you guys? I didn't own one. You I didn't own one? Lived, okay. I lived in the dorms with people who did. In DC? Mm -hmm. so. Same thing? Or oh, did yeah, you own yeah. one? Okay. None, none of those consoles were mine. That was just okay. all okay. my roomies. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't really start picking up on like picking up and buying consoles and everything until I moved into an apartment during So college. we're so for two thousand two was PS two the most recent console you guys only owned at that time? For me, yes. Okay. I didn't have a GameCube or an Xbox until I was in an apartment. Okay. Same thing with yeah. you, DC? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I had I had a PS two and a GameCube. So yeah. yeah. I was I was at that point I still wasn't into Xbox yet. Xbox didn't have anything for me that was worth getting at the time. It's you know, Halo was popular, but I was like, what else do you have at that time? Um, so and Three, I was and I was biased. <laughs> I was biased against Xbox because you know it's the new consoles, American, and I was against Americans making their own consoles. Kind of like I don't know, America really good at making video games like that, especially for Microsoft. So I, <laughs> I I was I was just Japanese all the way. But you know that changed my mind halfway through, right? Because yeah. because you know that's when Microsoft was really trying to pick up. Like we need to get some developers over here. And on this list, there was a couple of jams off there. They have that like. I can't be mad at them. They got to do what they have because people compared it to the, it was like the second coming of the Sega Dreamcast, right? That's what the Xbox was mostly treated as. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I had the Pan Panzer Dragoon, mm -hmm. uh, Orta was coming. The Crazy the, uh, Taxi. Crazy Taxi. Yes. Oh my crazy gosh. I can too. tell you crazy some stories about free. that. Mm -hmm. uh, friggin' um, Outrun, the Outrun games. Yep. Some of the best Outrun games I've ever played were on the OG Xbox. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, they even had some of those hidden ones on there. I think it was called like Gun Gun Valkyrie or something like that. That was a Sega game. Like it had the girl with like um, a gun and she had some wings on them. I forgot what it was. You, does that sound yeah. familiar? I think it, it's from. It's it was, the same people that did just said. It's Smiley Bits. And so, oh goodness, uh, I know I what you're remember. talking about. I've seen it, mm. but I can't place the name. If it was Gun Valkyrie, Gun Valkyrie sounds right. Okay. Um. See, hold on. It's not like I have. I don't have like the world's knowledge. In my, <laughs> my right. You look um, into that. I'll continue you're on. Right. It, was, it was Gun Valkyrie. It was Gun Valkyrie on the OG Xbox by Sega. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a hidden gem at for Sega. Sega really supported that console a lot at that time. Um, because the only thing you got over there later at that time was like Headhunter for for a PlayStation. If you remember that from Sega, but you know Microsoft was really trying to push their RPGs a lot. You remember yeah. that, you know, that was slowly getting to the Knights of the Old Republic. That was a big jam over there for them. Jade Empire. You know, getting all those mm -hmm. American kind of games. But there was a lot of terrible games on there, too. GameCube. GameCube was still treated as, you know, kind of like the, the kids console, whatnot, per se. Uh, but they still had Rare on their boat before they got bought out by Microsoft. Internal darkness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 The, <laughs> one, of the, one of the best well-kept secret failure games of the GameCube. Sadly enough, it did not do well, but it caught a lot of eye, right? So, sadly enough, you know, um, there was a lot of ch risk taking on the GameCube too. The whole like, you know, looking like a lunchbox, <laughs> the tiny discs, you know. So, it was, yeah, that, but I mean, it was still, it was one of those um, consoles that if you had multiple brothers and sisters, you got, you know. Um, Brand, Brandy's family owned, owned one GameCube, multiple controllers, and they played, you know, Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let not Legend of Zelda Four Swords because that required the, the, the <laughs> Game Boy advances, but Smash Brothers. You know, that was that was that was the party mm -hmm. console. Yeah, that was the party and, console. And you had, remember it all the connectivity with four ports. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, the Xbox did too, but uh, I was more prone to play time time splitters on the GameCube. But one thing a lot of people forgot that Nintendo did. That there was this plan that they were going to do, but it just backfired little by little. And it was the Capcom 5 special for the GameCube. Does anybody remember that? Does anybody um, remember that? Okay. What, you mean like, mm -hmm. okay. like Beautiful Joe they, and stuff? Kind of, right? There was going to be five Capcom games that were going to be exclusive to, to the GameCube at the time, right? You had that terrible P&O 3. Everybody remember that one? Not that bad. It didn't age well, but you know what I'm talking about. It's a white cover. It had the girl with the glasses. She had she was all in this white mech suit. She looks like the uh, the uh, character from Vanquish, but she was just like all white. If you remember that, um, yeah. Beautiful Joe. 
You remember Beautiful mm-hmm. Joe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You had, um, I believe the other one was going to be a Panzer Dragoon kind of game. It was called Phoenix something. I forgot what it's called. But it was going to be kind of like a Panzer Dragoon style. Um, then you had the Resident Evil remake, which is on this list, right? And then lastly, it was going to be Resident Evil 4. Because Resident Evil 4 uh, was yeah. on the GameCube first before it went to the PlayStation. Yes, and that's so- what made a lot of people want to pick up a GameCube. Yeah. Yeah. Cap- I mean, Resident Evil Remake came out in 2002. So mm-hmm. Resident Evil 4 wasn't too far behind. Yeah. We don't talk about Zero. I don't talk about Zero. But some, mm. but there is some games on the list that didn't quite make it over there um, on this list, like Shinobi. Shinobi didn't make it on this list, but that was on the PS2 around that time. You know, yeah. <laughs> Shinobi oh. didn't age really well to me, so I didn't think it, it was that popular. I, ooh, ooh, do I see a twisted face over there? Did, it, did you like Shinobi? Did you like the PS2? I, I like the Genesis Shinobis. Okay. After, okay. Uh, that, that's all I got to say. <laughs> okay. Now, there was um, a big dispute on on the release date of this question. Now, Wind Waker is actually, they said it initially came out here in 2002, but it came out in Japan in 2001. So I was in a debate, does this count to be on the list? I was trying to say when when it came out initially. That's for me personally. But if we had to add Wind Waker, I would put Wind Waker on this list, but I kind of like, eh, I counted more like later, but give or take. But based on this list, Overall, what do you guys think of 2002 based on this game list that you see? It was a nice combination of new franchises and IPs because Lord knows that's getting rarer and rarer and familiar. It it, it was like new dishes and comfort food. It was a Mm -hmm. nice combination, new dishes and comfort food. Okay. I mean, uh, Metroid Prime. Mm Mm-hmm. It's kind of a mixture of new dish and comfort food. Resident Evil Remake, Mario Sunshine, Adam, the uh, North America's first exposure to Animal Crossing, mm-hmm. and we all know <laughs> the we all know the craze that that started. So I thought to, I think 2002 was a was still in the heyday of experiment, new ideas. That's the word I wanted to hear: experimental, right? Because yeah, the, the, it the was rise just a lot of, of the West. crazy ideas. There was just oh, a yeah, lot yeah. of crazy ideas in there, right? And so, what about you, DC? Yeah, like whenever uh, Jet Set was came out, like me and one of my other really good friends, like that was our jam. Like I love just you know doing the cool like skating, doing a little yep. graffiti, doing some more skating, doing a little graffiti <laughs> there, do some tricks, blah blah blah. And then you know like the uh, uh, Kingdom Hearts, you know that kind of mashup. Like wait, Square. This, what is this <laughs> right? be, wait huh and <laughs> 20 years later <laughs> mm-hmm. metroid in first right person here. that's weird <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> mario with a with a with a hose what? <laughs> what, what, what what's going on here you know um, yeah it, it's just all those all the mixture of just all the random crazy stuff yeah like you said experimenting mm-hmm yeah. So for the listeners, this is how it's going to work. We're going to w- separate this in three categories. We're going to talk about the games that we did not like on this list that we have played. Then the next list will be games that we never played. And then the games that we love so much. And normally we do two. But the first, how we're going to do this is you're going to do a little shout out to one of your picks and then talk about the one you really want to talk about. And we're going to get into that discussion. And we'll go ahead and get started with our hate. The games that we hate on this list that you have played and you're like, this wasn't for me. I was just not feeling this at all. So, DC, my guest of honor, why don't you please enlighten us of the games, the two games that you did not enjoy off this list? Oh, dear. It's going to make some people upset. Uh, first one was uh, Animal Crossing. That's Ooh. that's the one I'm just gonna kind of glaze over, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just I did not get it. I tried because everyone was playing it. Everyone I knew like had their little community set. was like, oh my gosh, come on, you do this. And I'm like, is there something I'm missing? Am I? It's like kind of like you know the Paul Travolta in Pulp Fiction. I'm like, am am I wrong? Am I am I in the wrong place? What's going on? <laughs> um, but the one I just did not, I had to just basically stop and go, I am forever done with this. 
is Morrowind. Really? Really? Yeah. That's, you that's hate Morrowind. Is that what I'm hearing yeah. clearly? Okay. Uh, I I am not. I do not like Morrowind. I do not like Skyrim. I do not like Oblivion. I just. Nope, 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 Okay, nope, nope, nope. pause for a second. I want to roll back to Animal Crossing for a minute. Were you not into, like, simulation games, just out of curiosity, or did you like a lot of simulation games? This one, that one just I, didn't click for you. I played the heck out of The Sims. Like, I love to build my okay. little fantasy people and stuff like that. Okay. It's just Animal Crossing, I was just like... <laughs> like, sorry, wait, did I, you... Sorry. What, for the wait, people wait, that wait. are listening, I, I made a... I have, I have zero cares for anyone here <laughs> so so i guess because like animal crossing kind of it's more like just you living a normal life compared to you playing management with the people i guess that's a huge difference that's the difference i guess like i i just basically i was just like i tried it for <laughs> a couple days and i was just like i can't you cannot pay me enough money to pick this up again okay no thank you okay <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, with Morrowind, you yeah no, that's like double for Morrowind and all the other games that came after it. Like I did a little bit. I will say I did a little bit more of Oblivion than Morrowind. But oh my gosh, I just so I grew up on PC, you know, uh -huh. as kind of earlier mentioned, and I played the first of the Elder Scrolls series, Arena. Loved it. Got I played hundreds and hundreds of hours of that. Daggerfall, same thing. My game broke, you know, half a dozen times and I had to restart, but I loved restarting and adventuring fresh. I loved the feeling of it, despite all the glitches and all the craziness with it. Morrowind, I just was like, I don't like you people. I don't <laughs> like any of the things. I don't like this system. You took what I loved in the other games and just killed it and you stomped it and you burned it in a fire then you launched it into the sun then you made it into a black hole and <laughs> i do not have enough hate to show how much hate i have is it the first person view you didn't like is it too many choices if are the people boring was it too slow like what was the key, no. was there what was the key point you're like this ain't it like it just starting with character creation i just did not like it, it just felt it, i i could not get into it like I could with uh, Daggerfall and Arena. And then the story just kind of like, eh. Like, I, I guess it's like kind of like they tried to serve me caviar when all I wanted <laughs> was Mickey D's. Like, I just wanted my average kind of janky game. Just give that to me and I would have been happy, but they had to go and mess it up and that's 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 it so <laughs> um I mean, elder scrolls is still pretty janky <laughs> i mean yeah if you think that's janky you haven't played arena and daggerfall that's all i gotta say then <laughs> <laughs> draw what's your thoughts about that um have you played morrowind at all uh i played oblivion i have not played morrowind uh according to uh, a lot of people you know in the past that i've, that I've hung out with Morrowind until Skyrim, Morrowind was a second coming. You know? That's very true. That's very yeah, true. I, it, I, I mean, it's even effect today. You, it's it's expensive to get an Xbox copy of Morrowind. You're better off just mm. grabbing it on Steam. Yeah. Um, I, I wasn't agree. into I wasn't into the first person RPG stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I kind of still I, I kind of still am not mm. uh, cyberpunk notwithstanding. Okay, but. No, yeah, I I never played Morrowind, but I remember everybody was on that. It was either Halo or Morrowind at the time. Yeah. And it was almost like that was a system seller to the almost. And it got Bethesda really on the map, right? Yeah. Cuz it wasn't Fallout there, 3. There were bundles. There were Xbox bundles with Morrowind in it. Mhm. Mm it's so much that now it's in the uh Elder Scrolls Online. They brought that world back on there and whatnot. And I didn't jump in until actually I got into Fallout before Oblivion and and skyrim and stuff and i guess like i like fallout so i was like i guess i can ease through there but i will say compared to those two i feel like fallout goes a little bit quicker for me personally than the elder scrolls series elder scrolls there's a lot of build up a lot of build up before like it actually starts and what's it's interesting about it it's the only game that i remember at the time where it's like oh you could beat this game in 20 hours it's like 
there's more side quests in the main story. Like, that's weird. It's like, I never played a game like that many side quests, right? Side quests was not a thing years before that, right? It was like, here's a tidbit here and there, but it was never like 90% of it was side quests, then 10% was story. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I mean, side quests have been around for a good while, but but not to that amount. I no. mean, even Final Fantasy did not have really any side quests. It, it, I mean, character side quest, but that was, not, uh, yeah. I, not like, so are much. Are talking about like get lost for hours? Yeah, that's what I'm talking quest? about. Like yeah, the side, no. little side quest is kind of like doing, trying to find a certain weapon so you can do limit breaker on Final Fantasy X. That's a freaking <laughs> side quest to me. Not like, <laughs> I mean, not like there's an option you go this way and it will develop more like magic and stuff for your character stronger, that kind of pathway. Yeah. I mean, Chrono Trigger had a number of uh, side quests. You know, it was like, mm -hmm. oh, you could do this and get stronger, or you could go beat the final boss. Yeah, but that game had a lot of twists and turns. Like, Elder Scrolls was very oh, yeah. straightforward. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. Like, oh, uh, I was just going to say, like, yeah, like, Chrono Trigger, like, just all the expanse of everything they could do in that game on the Super Nintendo just still blows my mind today. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's, but, you know, that was, that was, that was 90, what, 94? 95 95 yeah because yeah. it was we were getting close to the tail end of the super nintendo because right after that was super mario rpg they kind of wrapped up you know it was the swan song of the <laughs> yeah of square on on nintendo <laughs> right <laughs> to be fair there is crystal chronicles on the gamecube Never, never again. I I don't know what year that is, but I'll put that on the list so I can just hate that game. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll go next to talk about the next game I don't like. Um, now this this was tough because a lot of these games I have played, and I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I hate this game, but if I but if I had to pick my least favorite on here, I have to go with um Splinter Cell. I was just I was Team Snake. <laughs> I was oh. Team Metal Gear, and I played Splinter Cell, but I think Splinter Cell, uh, Splinter Cell, was a little too realistic com in that way. Like you cannot make any mistakes. Like I feel like Metal yeah. Gear, you got kind of away with stuff, but then it kind of got sci-fi, you know. Um, but Splinter Cell was like you really had to know your loadout. You have to go in there. Everything has to be very precise. If you mess up, it's over. Compared exactly. to Metal Gear, I, I feel like Metal Gear, I can at least, if I made a mistake, I can probably get out of it. Like, if I left a dead body on the ground, they're searching for like, I can still knock him out. I can still knock him out. But Splinter Cell was like, man, you're probably going to die real quick if someone finds out who you are. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, those, those tri-goggles were pretty cool, but not cool enough for me. And I think the controls mm -hmm. were a little wonky for me at the time. And yeah, so... Uh it was about as hard as uh, the first Hitman game, first two Hitman games. Mm -hmm. Like, if you made a mistake, that's di that's it. Mission over. Yeah, and it was surprising to find out that was an Ubisoft game. Because I was like, huh, Ubisoft is doing this? Ubisoft never did that. They were getting off the Rayman train, right? And here they are coming mm -hmm. with this game. And it was like, huh, okay. You know, totally but still different. to this day, it just rivals it. What do you guys think about Splinter Cell? Oof. I never you played first. it. I watched some people play, and I was like, "That's pretty awesome." Oh wait! Oh wow! You are you are dead. You super dead. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I, oh man! I uh, I heard of it. I didn't really get to touch it until the second or third game. Like uh, I think Chaos Theory when they did the online mm -hmm. aspect where you could be the spies or the mercenaries. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was my only exposure with it. But yeah, it was. It was a little too much for my patience level back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure if I went back and played it now, I might enjoy it. But uh, all it takes is, like you were saying, all it takes is a couple of missions where I shouldn't be seen. If someone just looks up and <laughs> sees me and game over. I'm like, all right, screw this. I'm replaying Metal Gear Solid 3. <laughs> <laughs> and then my my second runner up is Mario Sunshine. Um, it was... It, I give them credit for trying something new, but it felt like they were doing too much for what it was. Um, you want to squirt everything with water? Yeah, it, but the problem was is like, oh, like going back to that game, the aiming of that water gun was more of a nuisance than it should have been. You know what I mean? I just, I didn't. Re you, it was just a little bit too much. Switching it back to for back and forth between being a, um, an um like an air jet, water jet, to just shooting it out. Uh, 
the boss fights were kind of tedious because you have to spray them down before you hurt them. It was a lot of work just to do that. And you could tell that they took away from that after that. It just went back to normal Mario, but just a different <laughs> theme, right? <laughs> from Galaxy to the everything else. you never seen him with a weird contraption again, right? I mean, what's the what was the last weirdest thing he did? He threw a hat, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, you know, that, that, that was an interesting game, but it was definitely one time. And now playing it again, kind of on the Switch on the collection, I don't. I definitely show me. I don't miss that game at all. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, what do you? What, any any thoughts on the Mario Sunshine? No. I I wanted to like it. I like it <laughs> in principle for what they were trying to do. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely one of the few Mario games I didn't even have the guts to get halfway through. Okay. I was like, nope. Maybe someday. But it not is today. the Skyward Sword of Mario games. There, I said it. I said it. It is a Sky Wars. Really? Game. Yeah, you had to, you had to go there. Yeah, wow. yeah. What other Mario so games is a Sky Wars Sword like? Huh? It's misunderstood, but <laughs> still a good game, just not for everybody. Well, you're saying Sky Wars Sword is not a good game? <laughs> <laughs> well, like said, it's a it's it's a it's a good game. Just not it's a one time good game. That's what I'm trying to compare it to. It, it's a Sky War. All right, DC uh, concur or what's your thoughts? <laughs> Uh, I did not play this one either because my roommate played it all the way through, like just basically ha- sat down, went through the whole thing, got all the little extra secrets, everything like that. And I liked watching him play it because he was having a good time, but I would never touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a fan of Mario games in general? Just out of curiosity? No? Okay. I'm a Sega brat because okay. Genesis can what oh. Nintendo don't, son. There you go. There you go. Now we can just work. If they can work on, if they work on Sonic, we're in, right? <laughs> now I, I will say I, I don't play any Sonic games. Okay. I love their soundtracks. I do not play them. Okay. I was watching uh, my friend, my uh, girlfriend at the time play them. So yeah. Okay, I understand completely. All right, final. What you got, Jerron? What game you? What game you ain't like on this list? What's your runner up and your main one? Oh goodness! All right, so my um, my runner up, my runner up's gonna have to be uh, Battlefield 1942. That's not on this list. Oh yes, I just added. No, <laughs> <laughs> you trying to DC this? Don't you DC this? <laughs> you can't pull a me. Only I can pull a me. <laughs> That's why he's the guest because he does this. Clear <laughs> that list in there. Um, all right, so uh, on that, I'm gonna have to say my runner up's gonna be Sly Cooper. At the time, okay. I'm gonna say at the time. Is that your and is I, that your main or your runner up? That's my runner up. Okay. The, now at the time, now in hindsight, I would totally go back through and play it again and give it a shot because I I played um uh, the third one and okay. it was actually pretty fun. Okay. But at the time when I played that, I was like, "What is this? What is this?" And <laughs> I just I I pressed the. Uh, I, at the time I had the old P- PS2 with the eject slot. I pressed that open, <laughs> took the disc out, and I was like, put that back in the Blockbuster case. I was like, nope, back <laughs> you go from whence you came. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, 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 I couldn't get into the platforming and the sneaking. At the, I, I was a very impatient, impatient young man. That um, was during the time a lot of platforming is coming on. I mean, Ratchet and Clank is definitely one of these on the list. And yeah. also on top of, you know, Jack and Dexter was, I think, was the year before. They were, they were there were a lot of mascots from PlayStation. Yeah, the, the 3D the 3D platforming and exploration open world, they were still, you know, kind of perfecting that. Mm-hmm. And honestly, a lot of that just turned into tedious collectathons for me. I mean, that's the reason why I couldn't get into Spyro. It's the reason I couldn't get into Donkey Kong 64. Crash. I I, I don't uh, crash to a degree. Okay. Um, it wasn't it wasn't open world, but it was you know collectathon. I I can't I can't do collectathons. Like I'll play the game <laughs> as long as I can progress through the game without collecting forty eight gold puzzle pieces or some mm-hmm. or, or thirty feathers or whatever. As long as Thanks, I can progress without collecting all that crap. <laughs> Yeah, it, I, I'm I'm cool, but as soon as you start forcing me to collect stuff, no. Okay. Um, my primary. Now this is going to sound kind of controversial. Um, I hope I think I, I think I know um, what it is. I'm hi- I'm hype. I hope. Uh, trust me, from the bottom of my heart, I don't care. I <laughs> could not at the time stand GTA Vice City. 
I was way off what I thought it was. I thought it was going to be something else. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, what did you think it was going to be? I like, thought you were going to say Kingdom Hearts. Because I was like, let me talk to you about Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what did you think it was? Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. Um, I didn't finish it, but I did okay. play it. Okay. I played it halfway through. Okay. Uh, that That's a... That's close. You were close. That's okay. Probably third down. Okay. But it was going to be GTA Vice City. In hindsight, you know, I, I I love San Andreas, and I have a special nostalgia for three. Vice City was, I I tried, and I was like, no, no. San Andreas got me on board, but Vice City, I was like, was it the theme? Were you not an '80s person, or no, no? I love the theme, and I love the the that it had a freaking proper soundtrack. And all mm. the cars and stuff. It wasn't just the Scarface soundtrack from GTA right. 3. You know. <laughs> um, and then I got to deal with the Scarface storyline. <laughs> but um, uh, I don't know. It, it go, kind of goes in line with back in college. You know how so many people had the Scarface poster on their wall? Mm-hmm. I And I was like, okay, I like Scarface. It's a good movie. But I'm not going to like put a damn poster on my wall. And I'm not going to I'm not gonna like aspire to be a, a cokehead with incestuous thoughts about his sister you know um I, so yeah gta vice city i like gta that game here's what killed the game for me i'll tell you precise the precise moment it was a mission wasn't it it was a specific mission yep. and i'm trying to remember i think it was the rc car it was either the RC i know car exactly the talking RC about car. i know exactly what you're talking about yeah 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 i i said now, to be fair, I eventually went back years later and finished Vice City out of spite. <laughs> but at that time, I was like, you know what? This game. <laughs> this game could go to hell. You know, so. I have never been a Grand Theft Auto game. And sometimes it's because they just put too many missions on there. And then some of those missions are so tedious. It's where, like, I can't continue until I beat this. So I just stop. Especially when it's remote stages where you have to remote, like, a helicopter, a car, all that That is yeah. just so annoying for me. But I yeah. love what that world was. I'm a, I'm a, we're all, we're all 80s babies here, right? So, and I love 80s music. Oh, I'm sorry, DZ. You were born in the 70s. I forgot about that. <laughs> Anyways. I, I, I'm a little old. <laughs> but. Still got platform shoes. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he was there when Studio 54 was shut down, guys. Just letting you know how far DC was. <laughs> I was there when there were feelies in games. None but of this digital crop. <laughs> But I I always love the theme. I love the style. I, lo- I love all that. But yeah, Grand Theft Auto, sometimes their missions are, can be easily make it or break it. DC, what's your thoughts? I actually did not. That was going to be uh, one, the, one of the ones I did not play. So oh, I'm okay. going to have to come up with another one. Oh, I have, okay. I have plenty on this list I haven't played. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. So uh, zero opinion. Okay. <laughs> did you ever okay. jump on the GTA train at all of any of the entries? Only part three. That's the okay. only one I've played. Okay. I, right. I wanted to do San Andreas, but no one I knew at the time had it, and I didn't. I Man, was you're just mooching out of everybody, DC. I was a moocher for a very long period. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, he just gets their name, be homies with them. He's like, can I borrow that? I'll, I'll bring it back. I promise. I'll bring it back. All right. Let me get the PS2, I too. Do. Oh, I give do. me the console. Give me the console. <laughs> he be running, people. That college, that college, ooh, ooh. There's probably stories about you in that college. Like, mm-mm, we don't talk about DC here. We don't talk about DC here. <laughs> they loved me. That's all I did. I did. I barely went to class. That's why I was a forever junior, you know? So You were the Van Wyler. You were the Van Wyler of that school, weren't you? <laughs> I did not party. I just gamed hard. That's all. Oh, okay. And I mean, DDR'd, I mean, which my downstairs neighbors did not like. <laughs> What'd you say, Jerome? Van Wilder did come out in 2002. So. Yeah. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. It was all coming together, uh-huh. DC. <laughs> yeah. But that is it for our hate list. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the games that we haven't played. All right. And welcome back. I am Jeremy. This is Jerron. This is DC. It's time to talk about the games that we never played off of this list. Or maybe you played a little bit, but not enough to really say, eh, I don't have enough to say if I like it or not. But... Jerron, let's go with you first. Let's reverse this. Let's let's Missy Elliott this. Let's reverse it. So, <laughs> oh goodness, where's the camera button to reverse my image? Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I will say, um, 
I did not play Morrowind. Okay. I did not play. Um, I did not at the time of release. I did not play Metroid Prime or Fusion. Uh, I did play Metroid Prime. Start playing Metroid Prime when they re-released the trilogy on the Wii, but okay. that was. But it wasn't enough to give like a that Metroidvania get that feeling. So, um, I. I'm at, it's actually almost easier to say what I did play, but I did not play Ratchet and Clank at the time of release. Okay. Uh, I did not play Resident Evil Remake, interestingly okay. enough, at the time of release. It, okay. That was years later. Um, let's see. Because also, if I remember too, it's not on this list, and it didn't make the cut because like I didn't want to have two of the same games on there, but Resident Evil Zero, I believe, came out the same year too. Yeah, so. I... Um, I, I did not play enough of that to even get a good okay hit. like I did not really get deep into Resident Evil games again until I until Brandy and I started dating because she's the Resident Evil fiend okay. she's the fiend she knows the Resident Evil remake game every step like the back of her hand like so she is there, a living strategy guy. so it was out of the out of the games you said you haven't played was there any of them that you were interested in all that you wanted to play off of there. I wanted to okay, so I wanted to play Mech Assault at the time. Okay, I finally played it years later, but at the time of release, I wanted to play Mech Assault because it looked like fun, especially you know playing online. It was the, doing the Xbox Live thing, and I was like, oh, cool! I I I loved um, uh, BattleTech. I loved the the BattleTech the the Mech stuff back in the day. You know, uh, Mech Assault looked like a perfect you know reminder. I wanted to play. Uh, let's see, where is it? Um, I wanted to try out Ratchet and Clank because I remember some of the commercials. The know, commercials were crazy, awesome. Yeah, those, those crazy inventions. And I was like, okay, Ratchet and Clank looks like fun. Now, uh, you know, um, actually, still have yet to ever play a Ratchet and Clank game. So, Heads up. <laughs> Just heads up. I am a huge Ratchet and Clank fan, and I will tell you, the first one does not age well. Do Don't ever play it. Don't ever play it. It does not age well. I it is PS4 so tough. Of it. The PS4, Say what? The, the PS4 has a remake of it. Yeah, it's to, it's a movie. remake, but it's totally a different thing. It's based off more of the movie, right? But yeah. here, it's like, it is, it is tough. It is hard to grind in that game. It is hard to buy weapon. It, it's tough. It There's some games that are just tough to play for the first. It did not age well. Yeah, I go straight to going commando if you ever care to try it and go yeah. further on from there. So, yeah. I, I, I would like to see them do... Uh, re-release Ratchet and Clank Sly and Sly Cooper collections on the uh, current consoles. Well, you know now they... now you know on the PS3 and I own it, but it's the Ratchet and Clank trilogy, and they have a Sly Cooper trilogy all together. So those mm-hmm. exist along with Jack and Dexter. They they have just a lot of trilogy packs on the PS3 from Kill Zone, Got a War. Yeah, I may have to. I yeah. may have Infamous, to look into this then. all that stuff. Um, I may have to look into this. But that, but that's 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 me. Out okay. of that list, oh, um, I never played Divinity. We're gonna get to that in just a second about that one. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I never played that game either, which I'm excited why he put that on the list. I'm very excited because I had played the later series that is Divinity, Original Sin one and two, both phenomenal games. <laughs> Love those games to death. Hard as hell. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know what you're yeah. doing, it's hard as hell. I played with yes. friends. It's better with friends, in my opinion, and I'm excited to see what the developers will do with uh, Boulder Gate. I'm excited what they're going to do with that. But on top of that, that battle system can work with any game to me. I want a Star Wars game like that. I want an X-Men game <laughs> like that. Yeah. That's my dream. I want them to do an X-Men game like that. That would be amazing. But off this list, though, um, I also haven't played Mech Assault, and... Maybe because I wasn't really in the mood for like mech games yet. Ever since like I played Armor Core and I just didn't get it. So, Uh-oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I just didn't get it at the time. I, you know, the whole like, you know, it's basically like you go out and then you have to customize it, get, get it all suited up, cost money. I'm like, it's like it this is too much micromanagement. Me. It kills me that because now that I'm doing like streaming for the PS2 and stuff like that, I wish I still had some of those games, but. Mm. You know, <laughs> you know what happened. Yeah, I know what happened. I needed money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling. I, I, will, I will say, I will say, there are a lot of Armored Core fans. They are. And mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, I wish I 
been more into armor core because it looked it looks like fun oh it's so good it's i it kills me that yeah like that i i had the whole series and then just but yeah Mm -hmm. money is tough (laughs) it's, it's nothing it's nothing you can't acquire again in the future but yeah but based on this i have played nearly almost everything on there and besides Morrowind, which we mentioned before. And that's mainly because I never went on Xbox. And I was very biased about Xbox. I didn't think Xbox had any jams at the time. But there was one game on this list we'll talk about that hurt me. That like, why is it exclusive over there? That's not fair, you know? But that's 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 the, that's the beauty of the war, right? It's, it's all about exclusives. Oh, Gotta goodness. grab it. Yeah, you, you know? should see the, the war on Twitter right now between Xbox and PlayStation. It's ridiculous. Oh, you mean like every other day? Since the, yeah, since like, the 360 ooh, ooh, era, it's easier to, tra- it's easier to tra- trade out your hard drive on this than this. Suck it, PS fanboys. <laughs> I don't even care anymore about that. You know, yeah, it, all I know it, it, is Game Pass. Like that's their that's their bread and butter, and I love it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's 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 the that's the jam. DC, what, what games on this list you haven't had a chance to play? I mean, there's quite a few, but I'll just name two of the big ones. And I, I've not played any, I have not played these or any of the before or afters. Uh, never played any Metroid, never played any Resident Evil. I just love the wow. Resident Evil movies. Wow. And is that because you just missed the boat or you just had no interest in them? Zero interest. I love the soundtracks. To especially the remakes of the Resident Evils, like two and three, I love those soundtracks. I just cannot like. I just like look at them. Like, I know they're not for me. It's okay. Are you that, a fan of horror fine. games? Just at FYI, I just I curious. do like horror games, okay. but that was a different style that I was just not. Like I looked at them like. Yeah, it seems a little too puzzly for me. And then with the Metroid thing, just like. I just never got into that gameplay. Like, I will say I do enjoy Metroidvania games. Like, okay. the Astalon is the latest one I played. But, like, just the Metroid series itself, like, okay. zero interest. I love watching it, though, especially on GDQ. Like, I love what they do with it. But, yeah. You are such a mixed bag. I love it. <laughs> it's always surprises over there. Uh, that's very interesting. And... Is that now? It seems like you like Metrovania, but it sounds like you don't like the base of those games. What about Castlevania? Is that the same thing with you? You just Castlevania is not your thing, too. Uh, I played. Did I play any of them? Did you uh, play Symphony of the Symphony Night? Of the Night, at least. That's an that's okay. A, like, Symphony of the Night. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. I was like going like I'm surely I played one of them. yeah Symphony of the Night. I did play, and I played a little bit, you know, in arcades of like regular Castlevania and stuff like that. Um, but. Yeah, like I I also enjoyed the theme of that. Love the soundtracks, but I just watched other friends play it because they did a lot better, and they and I just, did not want to. And just to clarify, that's with the Symphony of the Night. You have never touched Super Metroid. You know that's their like their that was like one of their biggest games. You never touched that at all. On Super no, Nintendo? one just, of my friends had it. Okay, and I watched him play it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But, you, you you more a watcher and a player back in the day, huh? <laughs> I so I grew up watching my dad play video games. I was the original sense. Twitch viewer. What I yeah. that's all I can say. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You, probably, you might like Bloodstained. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. No. No. <laughs> no, no. 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 <laughs> no. I saw it. I was like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that went by quick. So let's go ahead and get into the main ones. Let's talk about the games that we love. We love a lot. Um. So. Is anybody if anybody listened to the perfect 10 episode, which I recommend everybody listen to that, if you want to hear the games that we gave a 10 to, um, everybody should know that Metroid Prime's on there. I'm not gonna talk about Metroid Prime. I already talked about it on that episode. You can go to listen to that episode. But you know, just for brief, I just want to say that um I love the first person. I love where the story went. Uh I think it graphically looks still looks really good to this day. Um yeah, just lo- I love I love that game and that journey that it took us to that. But the runner up. First on this list that uh, I love, uh, I love on this list, man. Weirdly enough, I know I I, I said it didn't age very well, but still, you know, Ratchet and Clank was my jam. <laughs> 
it not aged well. I to this day I, I will not go back to that game. But at the time, it was something different, right? It was a game where you didn't you didn't know blowing up stuff and having arsenal guns was the main objective, right? And then you just get better weapons as it go and you go to different worlds and you blow up stuff. The commercials were hilarious as they like do test drives of these weapons to see what what happened to them, like turning people into like ducks, sheep, cows, and all that stuff. Uh the two characters were hilarious together. The whole like backpack and what everybody has their own abilities. Uh I was into that more than Jack and Dexter in that aspect. Um but it was mainly the weapons that just really, really pulled me in. And then the whole space world. I love just going space to planet to planet, just exploring. I love the quirky Captain Cork that he's like this, this wannabe superhero that everybody worships because he's just a fake, a fake person. Um, <laughs> but because of that, you know, I think Ratchet and Clank, the series got better as it went. I think that they learned a lot from that first one and moved on, especially if you have your game saved. You can you can buy a classic weapon from the first one to the second one, so that was pretty oh, cool at the cool. time, and it just it just it got better and better. They learn from their mistakes, and here we are now with the newest one ripped apart. So you know they're on the right track. They're doing good, doing well compared to Jack and Dexter. I mean, the last game is still stuck on PS2, right? With Jack X, so <laughs> you know. Um, I recommend everybody giving that series a try if you like games where you can just have fun blowing up stuff. So I love, I love that. But the one, the number one on here that I love so much is Jet Set Radio Future. I love that game, man. Yeah. I, I, I love that game. Like I, that pissed me off. That pissed me off that it came on Xbox. And I remember I wanted to play that so bad. And I went to my buddy's house. I went to a buddy's house back in store where I was born. And he had that game. And I just stayed up all night playing that game. I loved it. I loved it. I love this is the Dreamcast. And I, it hurts me to this day that this game is not ported anywhere. Like we got we got a remaster of Jet Set Radio. What in two thousand and seven? And so. And Jet Set Radio Future still hasn't even came out yet. And now we got we got uh, Reptile Studios or whatever that company is that's doing the new, you know, inspired by Jet Set Radio. That's yeah. coming out exclusive to Switch, uh, time exclusive to twenty uh, for a certain time in 2022. And I'm like, well, someone answered the call. So, yeah, have you heard about it, DC? I I haven't heard about that, but I thought for sure it came out. I, or maybe I'm thinking of. Uh... Of uh, maybe a uh, uh, Jet Grind Radio. No, that no, that one got a remaster in 2007. Jet Grind Radio, but yeah. Jet Set Radio Future has not been ported ever since. It has never been ported over. Wow. Right. Yeah, to this day. Yeah, Whew. it's back. It's on the backwards compatible list of all the Xbox consoles, but it never got a touch up because Sega, I don't think, sees anything there anymore. A lot of their games, they don't see anything there anymore, like Crazy Taxi mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But what made Jet Set Radio stand out so much? Because it was so freaking weird. And the fact that who knew skating and graffiti would have been fun. And then the hip-hop music from the DJ and everything dancing. The shell-shaded world. It looks like a cutout. It looks like a like a pop-up book. And everything is just... like If you go back to that game, it looks like everything is taped together. <laughs> like all the days, it's all taped together. But it's so cool and so Japanese that it is so amazing. And the creativity that they do... Yeah. With that, I, I, I think that that game still aged very well because of that animation and that style. That I just love that game, and it Jesse Rayo deserves the a comeback in some shape or form. And luckily, this this developers are gonna they're, they're the ones doing it with their game. I forgot the name of the game. What's Bomb the, Rush Cyberpunk. That is a hard name to remember. Um, <laughs> but. Hopefully, maybe, maybe if they do well, maybe they'll get the tick the tickets or the keys to the Jet Set Radio Future series. I don't know, but other than that, I love that game. I think everybody, if you if you can get your hands on it and find it, which is not hard. I mean, it's bundled with Sega GT, <laughs> so oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure and you can find it's it everywhere. You can't swing a dead cat without. Yeah, it's that. cheap as hell. You can probably find it for three bucks, but it it is amazing to me, and it, I think it should be beloved. It's one of Sega's probably one of their better products that they just don't care about so uh dc i know you're on that boat with me i know you got some skates on with me what what what'd you think what do you feel about that i loved it i was so i will say i got rollerblades because i i don't 
remember the move, name of the movie, but there was that one movie where it ended with the big sunset, you know, in the background and stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I got really really scared of that movie. And then whenever this came out, I was like, oh, man, I just need to go to try again. I just completely failed. I, I lost any sort of athletic ability to do that anymore, so at least I could live through it in the game. And I sucked at the game. So <laughs> fortunately, though, my friend uh, Jack was awesome at it. So, yeah, I okay. love just watching him just kind of like sail through the, le- the levels and everything like that. Just like exactly like I wanted to do, but I just wasn't able to get my mind into my fingers to do it like he could. Mm-hmm. So it was just like it was just like watching like music, like just like, a you know, just like mm-hmm. masterful. I loved it. Yeah. I own the soundtrack. So I, oh, yeah. I, I own, I own all that the once in a while. for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's crazy. And just the fact that like uh, a lot of people didn't know that you can customize your own graffiti in the game. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, oh, you yeah. Can, yeah. And you could put it on um, this, you know, spray paint it everywhere. I like how like in each section, your job is to spray paint a certain amount of graffiti in spots, but then like they up it with the cops, you know, mm-hmm. so much. It gets violent. The cop tries to shoot you with a gun. He's trying to oh, kill yeah. you. Lots of oh, yeah. a cartoon. Yeah, we we ain't kidding around about graffiti. Yeah, Lock yeah. Load, you know? they they're bringing in uh, military. There's helicopters. There's tanks. Yeah, yeah. And you got to graffiti hey. those to blind them so they can crash. You're upsetting the status quo. You have to <laughs> yeah to yeah to get other graffitis. You have to collect the the icon of the games, like the little radio that looks like you know like a like a ghost head or something. I don't know how to describe it. Mm-hmm. A head but, wearing headphones. Yeah, yeah. You collect those yeah. so you can get more graffiti. You can replay these levels. So crazy to the point where like once you get the free roam. You'll see a background that looks like you should be running into a wall. It looks like someone painted on there, but you go, it just cuts to the next scene. Like, that's freaking weird. If you're going about to play that now, it is weird, but it's so cool. And so, and there's just a diverse, there's about 10 characters you could choose from, and they just unlock. And and I think my favorite part about it is in the menu where everybody's just grooving and dancing. You're like, who do you want to pick? And everybody's just getting Mm -hmm. into it from beat, just doing like the clap hand thing. You know, the tab, the tab just sitting on the speaker, just kind of just chilling yep. out. You know, there's people outside the hut so, just grooving it yeah. in. Yeah, that was the, like the best character selection screen ever. Like, yeah, like yeah. It. And then you have the funky DJ, right? That's just like, yo, 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 we go, we go do a jet set radio. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah, love it. Love that game. DC, what's your runner up and what's your main one? Okay, well, I mean, obviously, it's going to be the two that I picked. So, uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, um, uh, I will start off with my uh, runner-up being now. As much as I trashed the other game earlier, I, that's going to be my fave. So, going to save that for a second. But Divine Divinity is my runner-up because what? Oh, I, that's weird. I thought it was going to be the other way around. Okay. I know. I know. I know. I, I love Divine Divinity because it gave me that little extra that I wanted in like a Diablo S game. And uh, so actually I played Beyond Divinity in sequel first. Okay. So I didn't, I, I didn't exactly find this game in 2002, but after I played through Divine or Beyond Divinity, I was like, oh man, this is a part two. I need to get part one. And I love that even more. And mm-hmm. I, I, I'm going to say it is a little bit jank in some areas and it could definitely <laughs> use some polish, but that's what you see in the later versions, obviously with Divinity, Original Sin and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And it's just crazy to me to see how, like, to me, it felt like very culty. I'm like, ah, it's, you know, I like it. I know it's not going to, you know, entertain everybody, but now it's like, you know, it, it everyone i know has played through it or at least wants to play through it and then they did the kickstarter board game that got super mega funded i didn't and, know that yeah okay yeah uh so yeah that is that is my runner up i love it i love all the sequels it spawned uh but yeah my favorite as much as i hate 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 the gameplay it's a guilty pleasure huh yep guilty freaking pleasure gungrave and then of course it came out later by Gungrave overdose. Okay. But uh, yeah, well, I'll just keep it to Gungrave because I originally came across this game, as you can see, in like a GameStop. And I was like, I mean, it's a. Uh, the cover is it, very yeah. interesting, right? It pulls yeah, me like, I kind of. 
Yeah, it, it kind of made me think of like uh, a little bit of Vampire Hunter D. I was thinking a little bit of uh, Devil May Cry then, too. But with guns and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then the back of it, uh, the description uh, being, uh, you know, you're a, an assassin and you got your big guns and you got your huge coffin that you can use to either bash people up or, you know, it turns into a, various types of guns like a machine <laughs> gun or a rocket launcher or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I... After playing through that, eventually it took me forever to get through the system because you are a hulking beast. You are the the Terminator essentially, and you move like one. You go slowly. <laughs> Everyone's like, like ah, you know, doing all their guns and everything, and you're just like, I mean, eventually you'll go down, but you know, it's gonna take them a while, and you're just like, they give you a pretty long bar, huh? A long bar yeah. in that game. Okay. Like, and eventually, if you like stand still and you're doing your firing thing, you'll start doing like tricks, like a little boom, 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 just spin around and go boom, 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 do some gun kata stuff. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, just the cherry on top is the game got turned into an anime, and the anime, oh my gosh, just uh, the soundtrack to that is, is, one of my top three anime soundtracks. Very jazzy. Uh, I seen that series too. Yeah, and I I have it on Blu-ray. Um, and uh, I got when I was in Japan, I got a special Gungrave coffin knife. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Um, uh, but yeah, like I I was looking for it to try to show that off on stream, but couldn't find that one. But um, but yeah, like it. It just hits all the right notes for me as far as like the gameplay and the story and everything like that. So, okay. Um, so you, you, but you said it was a bit of a guilty pleasure. What, what was the bad part about it? The gameplay just, uh, like it, it was sluggish. Okay. Slug ish. You, it's like the only way to move. Was like do your jump move and go and do like the max pain like uh, you know like mm-hmm. you know jump like if you wanted to go anywhere that's how you had to do it because otherwise you just move like a freaking tank like mm-hmm. so do you recommend and, people getting this game and giving it a try or you're more like oh yeah you definitely should oh okay because, like if you've seen the anime you know you you kind of see how how that goes but the game itself goes cray like it it takes what the anime or you know i mean the game got turned into the anime but but just to specify the the anime is basically the prequel to this game right because we're seeing how he becomes beyond the grave right well the the anime it's like you know 90 percent of it is a flashback and then the last 10 (laughs) percent is you know the actual thing yeah that's why i say it's kind of a prequel (laughs) kind of yeah yeah, yeah. So like the ten percent of the present time is basically the game. Okay. Um, but in the game, it's much more like vengeance or not vengeance based. I like it. It feels much more missiony versus the 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 vendetta that you have in the okay. anime. Okay. Okay. But the last level, oh god, that the two last levels, I should say, just. Are freaking worth the whole struggle, in my opinion. Okay, I mean, and it's for crazy. Who's interested, and it's crazy that's a Sega game too. Like Sega published that. That's crazy. Hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, if anybody's interested, the anime is twenty bucks, and the game's like thirty, thirty or forty. I I I only played a little bit of Gungrave, not enough to remember the struggle that DC had gone through, but I remember the anime pretty well. <laughs> that intro is is one of my favorite songs. I really like that. Um, mm-hmm. don't know the name of it really. Um, it's tough to find out what the name is. Maybe I'm not looking hard enough. I gotta go on YouTube. I know the ending theme is family. Okay. Um, yeah. But I always never been a fan of the berserk '95 style, where <laughs> you know the the first episode is the last episode, and I'm not a big fan of that. And the rest is all mm-hmm. just a story building up to it. And it's more like I get it. I don't think we need a whole series for a build up to this. Like. You could get this knocked down in three episodes, buddy. Let's get back to the present. I want to know what he's going to do now and what he does beyond that. Hence, beyond the grave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, but 
I thought that game was pretty cool because it does have that Devil May Cry. Like, characters with guns in their hands was a very popular thing at that time. Yeah. So, hence, yeah. as you can see, with Metroid, Ratchet and Clank, you know, Mech Assault. Like, guns in hands was, like, the thing. Splinter well, Cell. Was... So. Yeah, I... I mean, I, everybody always loved that that badass guns akimbo type stuff. Even that old movie Hard Boil, mm -hmm. you know, it yeah. started the whole craze. And then anything mm -hmm. John Woo, guns and birds and birds and guns. Yeah, <laughs> Jaron, uh, take us home, man. What's what's the game you love on this? What's your run up and what the game you love on this list? Oh goodness! So it's gonna seem almost kind of backwards, but Kingdom Hearts. Got it. Let's talk about it. No, all right, all never, right, ever, all right. Ever, 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 ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on this list is going to have to be um, Runner Up Mech Assault because it, it it was fun. Uh, it's hard to talk about these games like at the time because I only kind of tasted them at the time and then later went back for more. But um, uh, on first on first glance, it's going to have to be Runner Up Mech Assault. I I love I love mech games. I think I would have loved it more if I was able to play with other people. Mm -hmm. um you know i didn't know enough people who had mech assault much less xbox live you know so mm -hmm. is what it is uh so, oh, oh but, sorry 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 before you go on i forgot i promised myself i would do an honorary mention dedicated to you on a game that also came out in 2002 can i can i talk about a game that's dedicated oh goodness how are you gonna bust my chops now <laughs> i have to i have to ladies and gentlemen i just want you to know that there was a special game that Jerron got and he got the whole set every piece to this game to play it. that is Steel Battalion just wanted to put that out there <laughs> yes. that came out in 2002 I've been waiting I for like, this and you yeah. you hooked me up with the mech assault thank you but yeah I, re I remember seeing people at OU who had that whole setup in the dorms and oh my god that's, that's a lot of stuff to play that game let me tell oh. you yeah the too and much. You have to have it to play it. That's yes, the, and when you told me you got all of it, I was so proud of you. I was like, "You're the first one I ever met that had the whole set." The yeah, uh, that's all, a Capcom whole, game. Whole, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It was crazy. I remember when it first they were advertising it, and it was like, "You want how much?" <laughs> all right, <laughs> and, and it's only for Xbox, and it'll only work on the OG Xbox. Okay. Okay. My number one love game on this list is going to have to be, uh, as bass backwards as it sounds, Resident Evil Remake. Okay. You are a big Resident Evil fan. That is very true. I, that makes I enjoy, sense. I, I am now. Like, it, I'm. this is the benefit of hindsight, that Resident Evil Remake, because I played the original Resident <laughs> Evil back in 96, 96, 97, and the director's cut, you know, and... Of course, if anybody goes back to play that game now, it looks rough, 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 rough. Very, so, if you, from, and it's very uh, tank controlly. <laughs> I mean, even the remake is still tank controlled, but it's a little bit smoother. Uh, it's it's smoother. It has the quick turnaround and the quick weapons. You okay. know when you get grabbed. So yeah, the Resident Evil remake was a much was a much needed you know improvement. Mm -hmm. So I I will always have a, um, a soft spot for that. And what's funny is that, you know, when when Brandy and I moved in together, we both had a copy of it. So we just, you know, I got rid of mine. She, she has, yeah, she has all the Resident Evil GameCube games. So, yeah, Resident Evil Remake. It It's, I, I have yet to still beat it, but whenever I'm ready, all I have to go do is tap her on the shoulder and say, yo, living strategy guy, let's go. You know, yeah. I think. I, I played I played Resident Evil remake and I beat that. I think what blew me away was at the time I think people were tr I think Nintendo was showing that like their how graphically their their console was because like yes. no one knew how powerful the GameCube was right because none of their games are very like upgraded or anything compared to PlayStation. So this game really shined the light of like no this game this console could really push the graphics alone on a small disc. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, Resident Evil 4 proved that. Yeah, even further, right? Yeah. Yes. But just the fact that, like, they did a nice coat of paint on the backgrounds that was beautifully done. Um, all the characters look new redesigned. Like, Jill looks 10 times different to me than the original. <laughs> right? And that's just, it's 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 so crazy. And then so much, you know, that spawned in the Resident Evil 0. We got a prequel for that. And just, it's funny because, like, now we're seeing Capcom with the Resident Evil Renaissance 
but it feels just like mm -hmm. at that time for the GameCube when you had Resident Evil, Resident Evil Zero, Resident Evil Four, you know, and it Outbreak. I don't want to talk about it, but that exists. <laughs> all right, you still got Outbreak over there. <laughs> I do, I do. I can't even lie. Yeah. I can't. Even, I can feel yeah. it. I can feel I, it. I, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Resident Evil Outbreak. If they do a proper Outbreak. I think it would be pretty bad. Yeah, if not they do this, it online not, and do it correct, yeah, yeah. yeah but DC not, not, not here, this Resident Evil verse or anything yeah. like they've tried to do. But sadly, DC just wasn't. This wasn't up his alley. He just wasn't into nope. the Resident Evil style. I don't. Not a survival horror person. Not a survival horror person. He is, but I, no, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you were you a Silent Hill fan, but I don't know if you were a Silent I Hill fan. I loved it. I could not play it because okay, so I. One day, like I watched my friends play it, I was like, "Oh, you know, this is kind of spooky." And I went, like, one late one night. I was like, you know, just doing the wiki thing. Went down the Silent Hill wiki verse thing, and head effed myself so bad I could not sleep for three days straight because I just had Silent Hill and just thinking like it was everywhere. Because I have a, like a really super hyper ima active imagination, and I just went cray. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that pyramid guy can come out of nowhere, just like that game, I mean, man. Silent Hill is <laughs> all around you, right? It is all around you. <laughs> yeah, but back and to like you know in Oklahoma, because in case people aren't here, like every Saturday at noon, we got those sirens. We yep. had legit yep. Silent Hill sirens. Yeah, that that's go true. Off at noon, that's very so. true. <laughs> but for silent oh for resident evil yeah that was a base of spark of like you know the revamp of the series right and that was the new thing was to go mm -hmm. granted two and three never got that treatment it just went straight to four <laughs> that was weird yeah. so but i think that was a good idea at the time and and also show nintendo what they can do you that also showed you can't leave nintendo out of anything they just always have some surprise up their sleeve who, who would have thought that was going to be on you would think it would be on playstation first <laughs> before coming on there and in the funny part is playstation never got the remake on there at the time it was only four yeah so yeah, it, i and i and like i said i you know i love i love 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 the silent hill soundtrack it's like it's like okay i never played silent hill love the soundtrack and like kingdom hearts i never really played it my girlfriend loves it she and we we've been trading the soundtrack back and forth, but it's like it blows her mind. That I never played it or touched it. Like I just, I yeah. need I need <laughs> to see your list of games that you have played, so I could just see the ones that you didn't play. And it's like, huh, that's interesting. Your path went interesting here. Oh, it, it's huge. It is unbelievable. Like I will like. Yeah. yeah, like I, I, I talk with some of the retro people and they're like, yeah, well, I mean, everyone played this. I'm like, not me. And they're like, there's the yeah. first time for everybody. And you right? say you're a retro game. <laughs> like, ah. Right. Right. Oh, I I'm mean, sorry. I didn't know there was a list. I just thought you had to enjoy old games. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are some cornerstones. There are some cornerstones out there that you don't have to love or anything like that. But um, yeah, there there are a lot of there are a lot of cornerstones. Out. I think a lot of people would bust your chops for it's like yeah, I like Metro Metroidvania games. I haven't played a Metroid or a Castlevania game though. But uh, you know, it's it's, it's all he made it through my counts. I'm, I'm good. I'm covered. he played Chrono Trigger. That's good. That's, that's he hit one of the mounts. That's one of the yeah. mounts that people ask like, you play Chrono Trigger. You know, yeah. so yeah, Con Contra. You're a Contra guy. Contra man. Yeah, I played Contra Hardcore. Fair enough. Yeah, Close you played. You played A. That's all it matters. Oh wait, no, no, no. I played Super C and uh, and Alien Wars. Okay, never mind. Okay, I'm good okay. on contract. There you go. All right. There you go. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, um, we'll go ahead and get ready to wrap this up. I want to thank everybody for watching us on the live stream. I want to thank DC, of course, for jumping onto the show once again to talk about 2002. But that's not all. There's, dude, we got a lot of years to go. There's plenty more years to talk about oh, and more games to be boy. surprised about. Um, I can't wait to bring you back on the show and talk more about those, my friend. Thank you so much oh, yeah. for making the time. And so, yeah, um, 100 for sure. I love it. Yeah, love being here with you all. <laughs> but if you are enjoying this, and this will also be on YouTube, if you enjoy this, please leave a comment down below. Like the like the episode. We love you. Hear your thoughts. Tell us the games in 2002 that you enjoy that we did not talk about. And we'll be happy to discuss about that among us and not tell you about it. Anyways, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, of course, remember, catch our boy DC. He's a great uh, Twitch streamer. Please join him. Have a chat with him. Have some coffee with him. 
And I mean coffee, oh, yeah. I mean like put it right there near the screen, like he looks like he's gonna drink it, but he's not. And so yeah. <laughs> and so but Rate as, him, host him. Right. Everybody. But as you know, this is part of the in-game boss program network game and other variety shows. So please check out all our great shows on the network. We love your support and whatnot. Remember we're on Facebook and Twitter. You can find me on Twitter as RetroAmp07. Jerron. You find me on Twitter at, at the Grumpy Bear84. In DC, do you exist on Twitter? Uh Maybe I apparently am getting Twitter <laughs> yeah. notifications. I don't use it, but people okay. tag me. And I'm like, oh, I have Twitter now. Okay, okay. cool. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, DC Bueller on Twitter uh, and DC Bueller on Twitch. And uh, I'm some crazy name on Instagram. Just <laughs> I, it's on my Twitch, though. You can find all my socials on my Twitch. Could they join you on your Discord at all? Oh, yeah, I do have a Discord. Yeah, it's also <laughs> on my Twitch. Just okay. find me on my Twitch. You can find everything else from there. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for listening to this live stream episode, and we'll catch you on our next level. Stage clear. Let's go. Yep, yep. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs>